Welcome to this episode of Maker's Math by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to jump in and take a look at calculating pitch circle diameters. But first, what exactly is a pitch circle diameter and why should you care? Let's jump into it. A pitch circle diameter is the imaginary circle that runs through the center of these mounting holes in a flange. So over here I have my chuck and this is what started this project. Uh, because I got this chuck in, I did a review on it, and I need to come up with a fixture plate to mount it to the CNC. However, in Fusion I need to be able to tell it to create the pattern what the diameter of the pattern is, or what's my PCD or pitch circle diameter. But how do I calculate that? I just simply have three holes how do I figure that? Well, that's what I'm going to show you guys. We're going to take a look at how to calculate it and then we're going to take a look at a shortcut. So let's move over to the math. Now first off, don't let this math scare you. It's pretty simple and straightforward even though we're using you know a sine function here. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So again, first thing we need to do is we need to know the center of each one of these holes. How do we do that? Long story short, we take a set of calibers and what we do is we measure the outer diameter from the outside, uh, I should say the outside of each circle. And then what we do is we do a little math on that because what we know is that from this we have a distance from the outer side of each circle as in the drawing. So basically to find the center we simply have to subtract twice the radius. Now we're going to assume that both of these holes are the same size. And from this we can either just add up to the radius of each one of the circles or we can just take the diameter as a whole. So H in this case is going to equal our measurement minus one of the diameters. Pretty si simple and straightforward. Again, I'm going to cover that again. Distance H is going to equal our measured from outside to outside of the two opposing holes minus the diameter of one of the holes. Okay? Simple and straightforward. Now, what we need to do is we need to imagine that there is a triangle formed between the center of these two holes and the center of our flange. Now, in order to use Pythagorean's theorem to solve this problem, what we need to do is turn that into a right angle triangle. So to do this, we're going to split this triangle into two. So this is one of the things, as we look at the formula, the first thing we do is multiply the whole count by two. And in fact, since we have three holes, we'll multiply it by two, come up with six, divide that by 360, and that basically takes and splits our triangle in half, as you can see in the drawing. That's the important part. Now, once we have the split, what we can do is we can take the sign of this number. Now, I suggest using Excel. If you've got a, you know, a scientific calculator, just punch it in, do the sign. Make sure that this, the sign function accepts degrees because the result of 360 divided by your whole count doubled will be in degrees. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but just keep that in mind. From here, what we then need to do is we need to take the measurement that we came up with in H before, and we need to divide that by that sine function. So as we go down here, in my Chuck example, I know that I'm um, basically 30.4 millimeters from center to center, because I did the math that we did up above to subtract out the diameter. So once I divide by 0. Um, uh, sorry, 0 0.866, Basically, I come up with 35.103. So that is now the diameter of my um, PCD or my pitch circle diameter. Pretty simple and straightforward. So uh, again, we double the whole count, so we split the triangles. So it's because as you can see, with this case, I would form three triangles, and I need to have six to form a right angle. And so by doubling it, we get that. We take the sine of the degrees that this yields, basically by splitting it, because in normal context, we would have 120 degrees between each one of these three circles. If we double it, we now, instead of 120, have 60. So that's kind of the important little trick here, if you will. So then we take the sine of that, divide that into our, our uh, distance, and Bob's your uncle. We've got the calculation. Pretty simple and straightforward. Let's take a look at how we would do this in Excel. 
So, kind of long story short, I'm an Excel fanboy, and in Excel, it's pretty simple and straightforward. We just do the math like we did before, but there's one little catch. The sine function in Excel wants to accept radians and not degrees, so we have to use the radian function to convert degrees to radians, and then we provide radians to the sine function, and then boom, we just have our answer, and we just divide H like we did in the prior example, and we have the answer to our problem. So you can set up and do all kinds of tables and everything else if you want to create cheat sheets on this. Now, the other nice thing about this, this really kind of gives you uh, some pretty good tolerances because you can take this out to you know you know four, five, six decimal places, so you can get very precise. Most of the PCD calculations you see will be for like brake rotors, tires, uh, you know rims, I should say, that have rather large tolerances. So now that we've looked at how to do this in Excel, let's go ahead and check our math. Let's see if we're accurate. Okay, so I've created this part in Fusion 360, and what I did is I went and I created a circle, about 4.7 millimeters, uh, and I took my H dimension, which was 30.4, and I did a pattern, and lo and behold, in uh, Fusion 360, I came up with 30.4 based upon use, utilizing a PCD of 35.103. So we've now proven that the math actually works. So here you go, folks. Real handy. Now, you might be asking yourself, is there an easier way? Of course there's an easier way, but it comes at a cost. Let's go take a look at that easier way, and I'll tell you more about it. So we have our bolt patterns. We have three, four, five, six, and eight. Now, what we can do is if you kind of notice when we did the sine function, it, it's with sort of we could come up with a constant based upon that because each one of these are at an equal distance from each other, right? So kind of easy to do. So what I've done is I've done up a bit of a constant here for each one of these. So in short, you simply take H times the constant equals the PCD. How simple is that? Now, it does come at a cost. As I said earlier on, that the PCD a lot of times is used in, in disc rotors, on cars. You know, we have a bit of tolerance. Utilizing this, this kind of cheat, you're going to lose a bit of tolerance. So depending on how tight you need your tolerances, only use this if you have a fair amount of room. If you don't have a fair amount of room, go back and do the math itself. So, Hopefully in this episode, I helped uh, dispel some myths around a PCD uh, and also helped you guys out there. If you have, some, have a similar problem like I've been facing with this Chuck, you now have an answer to it. How you can go out there and calculate it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have other kind of maker math questions, hit me up in the comments down below. If you've got a better way to do this, also hit me up in the comments down below. And... Uh, don't forget the bell button over there. Go down there, hit that bell button, be a subscriber, and Swag Shop's in the corner. We'll see you guys in the next video where we talk more math. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.